Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to so the Ninja Warrior Podcast. Sorry for the long way, everyone, but we are back here to talk about American Ninja Warrior Season 15. Yeah, but it's been, what, like a couple weeks since the last episode? Yeah, we are like three episodes behind internally. Yeah, so about that, we don't have an excuse. Once again, it's just like we will come when we want to, and genuinely speaking, we need to catch up, and I think we're going to be doing two episodes in one episode of the podcast for the rest of the qualifiers. Yeah, that's strictly it because, like, we were so far behind. Today we have the second half of the first episode of Season 15, and we're also covering the second episode as well. But then after that, we still have Episode 3 and Episode 4, which aired yesterday. So, um, oh, I think it was two days ago. Yeah, it was two days ago, dude, you idiot. <laughs> I'm not, okay. But, still, we still, um, next episode we are probably covering Episodes 3 and 4. Um, then episode after that, we'll probably do five and six. I do not know how many qualifiers there are this season. And if we check, we're going to get spoilers episode 15 cause, uh, for episode... Yes! You know what? That's like this is the season finale. <laughs> yes. Um, but if, uh, if I check it on the wiki, I am going to get spoilers for the episode that I haven't seen, the most latest one. So I don't want that. So we're going in blind. But if you guys do know how many episodes there are going to be, I guess you could tell us without giving us spoilers, obviously. But genuinely speaking, when I want to talk about, well, what we, what we <laughs> you know what the hell, like, you just want to get off. Yeah, I'd rather talk about literally anything else. <laughs> I mean, with how mediocre this season has been, I mean, you might as well. Yeah, exactly, but, um, um, we are talking about, um, the second half of episode 15 of, I'm not even going to talk <laughs> Dude. I don't know what's going on. Okay. But anyway, we are talking about the second half of season 15's premiere. And, um, yeah, that starts off with the changed out obstacles. We had two brand new obstacles popped in. I want to see what you guys think about them, and I do have some things to say about them as well. We have Grease Lightning in the second obstacle position. Um, thoughts on this? I don't think I have thoughts. I think I'm mostly indifferent to this, but I think it's fine. You know, it could be difficult if you don't let go. Yeah, but, like, that's only really the only, like, problematic, like, difficulty spot in this episode. If you do it in one move, you're fine. It really isn't all that bad. Yeah, and I think that's why it's just, like, it's fine. I don't think we really have much of an opinion on it. But then we got Obstacle, obstacle 5, Wing the Bells, which is a little much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this one, it's not, a, it's not a bad obstacle, but it comes down to just, it's over, it's over design heavy, you know? Like, just like with, um, what's it? Um, the getaway, which is still here as well. Uh, just like the getaway, which is still here as well. <coughs> just like the getaway, which is still here as well. Just like the getaway, which is still here as well, by the way, is, it is very much heavy on its gimmick and having bells for its handles and it's much for the simple fact that it's really glaring and kind of just like again it's a sore thumb in the middle of this course uh, it, it's a sore thumb in the middle of this course and i don't know i can't say it ruins it but it's like it's in the face it's just like it's a little too much for it's a little too much for this like you getting what i mean yeah because i have the same opinion well, what twinsies? There you go. You put fucking twinsies on this platform. Yeah, but that is exactly what we're dealing with here. And I'm school that I don't think I have anything wrong with. I'm just a little bit on the fence about in terms of, again, how it looks. I think I would have been more okay with an obstacle that's more simple in concept that has probably the same, like, difficulty and the way it looks is the same. But I just genuinely wish that it was, um, you know, a... A, bun a little less abundant, you know? Like, it's just, it just sticks out. Again, like, I don't know how else to say it, but there's also just a thing of, like, we should move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, um, the other obstacles were the same pole vault, domino effect, and once and the getaway, and whoop wall from, from the first half of the episode as well. Yeah, I think that we all, that's also I want to mention, it's just, like, I miss having, like, full-on obstacle changes. Yeah, honestly, it would have been nice if they're going to do um, these shuttle qualifiers that you like, 
use that time and like design some new obstacles. And I mean like genuinely change out every ep obstacle because that was something the Yo-Yo Seasons thrived in. That was like having a different course for each region. I understand they're not doing regions, but they're doing different rounds. And I would really love to see like every obstacle be different. Like seriously, I don't want repeat obstacles, especially obstacles that I don't like seeing like getaway. Yeah, like I would have, like we've seen. Um, episode three has a couple of obstacles that we're gonna bring up later, you know. And obviously, like it's not like they couldn't have. I just really wish like there was more variety, and they actually like you know change the course and not just like to make one or two adjustments to it. Like like change every obstacle, like like everything as I pull on the wall wall should be changed. For the new region, but for the new round, it makes every round feel different. Um, in addition to this being in the same op episode, it kind of um, is difficult to really differentiate the two together, which is probably another reason why we decided just to split this up. Yeah, it would have. It's simpler for us to cover, but it's also just like it was the best way to do it at the time. But really, the show does not do a good job of separating these two rounds. It kind of just says a new group of ninjas would take on this quote-unquote new course, but it's not much of a diff different course. And also, it's still the same ops, it's still the same episode. Like, the, ep the characters who won in this second half are still promoted in the first half of the episode, completely ignoring the fact that that was technically filmed at a different night. Yeah, they definitely act like it's weird, and I understand it's like they wanted the double length episode. But I'll be genuinely honest; I kind of just wish like they could have just made a double length episode out of showing everyone in round one. Like there were cut ones they could have shown. Yeah, aka the people who ran the races. Exactly. Um, I guess like on that tangent, the, the only cut ones were the people in the races. But still, we'll get there. It's still like a little bit baffling, but. Um, I think we should get into this, as I think it's time. Yeah, okay. So the first commander, we have Violet, Violet Capoe, a teenager who is really into Harry Potter. And I mean, like, really into it. Like, it's the only thing they feel like talking about with her. Yeah, she had this whole segment about how she got into the books and how much, you know, we don't care. It's like, it's like, it's the most vague thing ever. And... I, someone who doesn't know shit about Harry Potter, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's like, 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 there's a friend in my, there's a, I have a friend in my school who's, like, obsessed with Harry Potter, but that's, like, it. It. But it's just, like, the most loose get -gath gathering of it. Like, they just say it's, like, magic. That's really about it. That's the most... Um, vague way you can say it, and they really don't aren't specific about it. And that's not what they came here for, yes, but also I don't think that should be their story if that's really, you know, all you have to say about them. Yeah, there are different ways to convey this. I feel like, again, they could have given the ninja a better story. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm I guess I'm kind of glad she got a story, but also just like, it's a little pandering. And, um, yeah, it's a little much, but I don't think I have any specific criticisms to it. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think that this one we're just, like, rambling on. So let's go into a one, which was pretty good, honestly. Yeah, um, Violet made all the way to the fifth obstacle, Wing the Bells. I hate that name. God damn it. <laughs> you find something else to call it. Um, let's see. I want to just call it, like, Stalled String... Stalled Swing or something like that, because, like, the way the bells work is that they kind of just make the distance... Um, because of the way they wing each other and they hit each other, they hit, the handles hit each other, so it makes it harder for it to jump if you aren't quick with it. If, okay, you know, it's a big, long drop and it's intimidating too while you're up there. So I kind of just wanted to call it, again, the stalled string or the stalled swing or something like that. Like, I don't know, something like that. Maybe by next episode I'll have an actual name for it, but I genuinely hate calling it Wing the Bells. Like, because... Yes, that's the obstacle, but I also hate that that's the obstacle's gimmick, so that's why I want it to be different. But it's fine. Like, I don't think we should be complaining about it. Yeah, we already spent the like, majority of the episode complaining about it. Exactly, so we should just keep on going. Violet made it there, where she ended up falling in the last handhold. And then we had Hans Hutz, who was on AW Jr. Yeah, um, he had a story on Veo talking about his, um... 
his um his younger brother who had um TMS I think it was called I don't know correct ML Christoni writing that you can correct me <laughs> yeah I don't remember either but basically his brother had a disease that made him non-verbal and um also you know it's like months months but also you know his face is a little bit deformed but you know they, they kind of just like show us like a lovely brotherly bond relationship and I think it's a little wholesome I'll give it that yeah and it's not overly long either it kind of feels like it um represents Hans as a competitor so I can I can definitely get down with it I think Hans 1 is actually like a pretty fun to watch too yeah he didn't have the fastest one of the uh, he didn't have the fastest one of the episode but being the first finisher of the night, it was a really good one. Yeah, he made the wing the bells look easy. Can we just talk about that? Like, he did wing the bells all in, like, two moves. And it shows that he really knew how to control them as soon as he got on the thing, on the obstacle itself. Yeah, like, I was actually kind of impressed. Yes, and I guess you were, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm pointing it out. It's just like, you, it's just like, we just sold this new obstacle, and then someone immediately, like, blasts through it. And, yeah, I think it was really impressive. Nothing really else notable about this one, but I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, it was just, like, a very impressive display. Um, after that, we had a fast-forward segment featuring... Ronald Stewart, who, apart from having a very interesting outfit... I've got no notes on. Yeah, no. It's like, the album he was willing was just this one, this, this like, it like basically overalls without the actual like overalls. It was just like, it covered his lower part and then just allowed his chest to show, which seems really pointless. I mean, you might as well just wear like a Speedo and stuff. Like, I don't see a point in that, but it's fine. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, some people just want to show the, um... <laughs> Okay, lack for lack of a some people just want to show them. Okay, for lack of a better term, for lack of a better term, manu manliness. Some people just want to do that, and you know, I mean, if, I mean John, if for some reason you just want to like say this and like wear pants, I I don't know why you'd want to wear a onesie like that. <laughs> I mean, I want it personally. God damn no. <laughs> As, like, someone who just wears glasses and just, like, I'm not a really manly person, personally. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just by gender. <laughs> you, you just said it right there, dude. I don't care. You know, that's the way I am. So, you know what? That's that's the the thing I'm going with here. It's just, in that way, it's just a choice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a choice. Wailing is a choice. Wailing is a choice. It definitely is a choice. And I guess this is the abundantly clear thing here. <laughs> Yeah, um, we went on a tangent here. Oh, yeah, for sure, 100%. Um, Ronald Stewart himself went out on, I believe, Grease Lightning, and then we had Josh Ferguson, who had a decent actual, like, reason for running. Yeah, he was wearing pink in support of his wife, who was battling breast cancer, and, um, he made it the third obstacle. I don't think I have any other notes on that, but it was interesting. Yeah, then we had Ninja Meadow and Melissa Cabo come back. Yeah, uh, I don't think we've ever come with her because she has a great since season 11. But she had a decent run going all the way to the getaway where she ended up battling in the runoffs uh, so later. So we talk about later, obviously. And then we had Jack White, who is the stupidest competitor ever because him and his twin James White are both social media stars who have no business being on Ninja Warrior. Um, any other thoughts, aside from how infuriating this is? Yeah, again, like, we talked about this back in, like, I think it was, like, season 13, where we had an even more infuriating case where two competitors who were social media stars got onto the semifinals course, even though they didn't belong here. At least here, it's like, maybe they applied to the show, maybe, but still, they did terrible. Both of them failed on Grease Lightning. I'm like, dude, you could have given their full-on runs and segment to somebody who deserved it way more. Yeah, like, I understand, like, they didn't, I understand, like, they were one of the people who, again, didn't reach the top 11 at all, and it was so pointless to even show them, because, again, aside from the, the social media stars, if they want, they probably would have had, had their, both their ones cut, honestly, because nothing interesting happened. 
They literally just bumped their head on the pole because they're stupid and then fell on Grace Lightning almost immediately after. Like, I don't have any more to say other than we showed them why. <laughs> Yeah, that's a question you end up asking a lot lately. Yes! I ask that way too heckin' much! Like, god damn! Yeah, um, I'm always on the fence about that, because most of these competitors are just showing for literally no reason whatsoever. But when you have competitors like this, yeah, I'm going to ask the question, we showed them why, because literally there seems like no reason to someone who doesn't care about social media stars. And maybe that might be a bias thing, but I honestly don't even see the audience caring about these people. Like, I don't see why that would get them views, why that would get them ratings, why people would even care. Again, that's not their audience. I really don't think that's their audience. Yeah, I mean, there might be something we're missing, but that's, I guess, this is genuinely our opinion here. Yeah. Um, anyway, after that, we had another Fast Forward segment featuring John Woe. And I don't think I have anything to say about this one. Yeah, yeah no, I've got nothing either. <laughs> the thing is that he just fell on Grace Lightning. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, one thing I do want to note with his one is that we, he and Megan Woe, the actual ninja, supporting him on the side, I think they're siblings, um, that's a thought. But, the thing I want to note is that Megan Woe actually got injured and is not competing this season. Ah, uh, okay, this is a very biased opinion because I am sick of her, but thank God because I don't need them giving us, a, like, a fifth story about her fucking axes. Like, I get it, nothing against the competitor or anything, it's mostly just the editors. I'm just like, I don't need to hear about this again. So, and that's just, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Which is the meanest thing ever. Yeah, you're literally so waiting because someone got injured. Yeah, I am a fucking monster. <laughs> uh, anyway, after that, we had Cam the Bomb, um, Cam the Bomb, Bob Garner, who also should have been shown again. Yeah, th yeah, this is becoming redundant, but Cam should have had his one shown. Like, without a doubt, he should have had his one shown instead of the fucking celebrities, the White Brothers. Like, absolutely. Yeah, same with the um, next ninja who came out, uh, I think actually before him, Emily Kina, who did just as well. Um, Cam finished the course, and Emily got almost finished the course as well. He knocked out by I, the fifth obstacle's dismount. Did you really just avoid calling it Wing the Bells? Yes! Yes, the frick I did! We're all biased here. I think we can all admit that, right? <laughs> Alright, but yeah... Uh, I think her one should have definitely been shown, just because she made it to the very end. She made it further than any other woman. And, you know, a woman hasn't hit a buzzer yet this season. Yeah, I don't know if that's changed as of the next episode, as of the latest one we haven't seen yet. But, yeah, as of as of what we've seen, a woman has not hit a buzzer. So, yeah, that could have been our first one. And if she made that and, and hit a buzzer, she might have been shown by the actual show. Yeah, the show might have actually given a shit. But instead, they do give a spotlight to a competitor who does deserve it from a Kai Beckstrand. Yeah, Kai, he ended up missing last season for an unknown reason, but he's back here. And I guess way to make a statement, as they said, he's one of the contenders to win it all, which I'm debating, but I guess we'll see how he does. Yeah, Kai had a really good one, getting all the way to the buzzard in under a minute. Yeah, 54 seconds, he got to try the Mega Wall, and he was the first person this season to get to the top. Yeah, and, yeah, I got $10,000, and I guess we have to talk about this, the Wells Fargo, um, the Wells Fargo, um, the sponsorship they have to talk about. Yeah, they have to, like, say their names, like, dude, no one cares. Like, I understand it's just that's the sponsorship and everything, but you don't, it just despite the logo, I don't see why you need to actually say their name, no one cares. But, okay, whatever. I don't that's out of all control anyway. Yeah, but I think it's just a point to mention it. Um, and we also had Brian Beckstrand as well, which they did not have in that Fast Forward segment. They just had him run um, right before Kai did, where they just showed it. He fell in the fifth obstacle, but did end up moving on, so we, we're going to be seeing him in the semifinals. Anyway, after that, we had another Fast Forward segment featuring... 
Will Wong. And, okay, do we have to explain why we showed this guy? I mean, we don't have a reason. If we just did, he fell on the first obstacle and there was literally no other reason. Yeah, no, there was no point on that. He was just shown because why not? And by the way, yes, they were ninjas that should have been shown this, but we'll get there. Um, after that, we had Mike Salinci, who had the slowest finish of the night, but still a very memorable one. Well, I guess, can't say memorable, but again, they always showed his one. It, yeah, he finished. Yeah, and then we had Jeremiah Boyd, a guy who probably should have gotten a full-on segment. Yeah, Jeremiah Boyd, who for some, for some reason had his name shortened to Jera. I don't know, maybe that was just their choice. Who knows? But Jeremiah, he went all the way, way to the buzzard and just barely got under the mega wall timer. Yeah, he, he got it by three one hundredths of a second. Uh, three one hundredths of a second. So he got a chance to try it and he destroyed it, getting up there and becoming the second competitor, second competitor to do it. Yeah, I, I feel like if you know if Kai didn't get it, or like you know Kai had his one earlier in the episode where they could have done that, he probably would have been shown. Yeah, it's a pacing thing, but honestly, I think Jeremiah should have been shown. He was way more, way, way, way more worth the time than any, than some other ninjas who were shown. Again, the White Brothers. I mean, need we say more? <laughs> yeah. Um, after that, we had the next shown one, that being Maddie Howard. That being probably one of the most surprising fails, as she made it all the way to Ring the Bells. <laughs> Where, well, um, she's the, the, just barely not making it. Yeah, she got her both feet on the landing pad of the obstacle, but then just fell back into the water. It probably being the most unfortunate fail of the episode. Yeah, she definitely could have been become, you know, the first woman to hit a buzzer. And I was thinking as I was watching this, after the statement we just made about no woman had hit a buzzer, I was like, wait, were we wrong? But no, she fell. I was like, okay, I wouldn't remember if she hit a buzzer. But yeah, Maddie fell in a pretty surprising way. Yeah, I thought we had Nate Hansen who blew a mustache. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have anything to actually say about it. It's just like something that was a thing. Um, Nate made it all the way to the fifth obstacle where he once again fell. Well, he fell for the first time in the qualifiers. I guess he got both his hands on that last handle, but he wasn't able to hang on. So he surprisingly was knocked out there. And then we had Austin and Gray in a fast forward segment. Yeah, Austin got a full, um, Austin completed the course, and yeah, I wasn't fast enough for the mega wall, but still, really good one. Yeah, definitely good to see Austin back. Hopefully he gets redemption from last year. Um, after that, we had a, uh, after that, we had Testum, Testumo Yanama, who made all the way to Wing the Bells. Then we had Ruyoi, Ruyoi, who also made all the way to the bells, all the way to Wing the Bells. And finally, that leads us with the races. Yeah, the one-offs. Um, we can talk about this now. The fact is, majority of these ones weren't shown. Yeah, they showed the women first for some reason. And we had Larissa O'Connell versus Jaylene Bennett. Jaylene had her one completely cut. And I think it's a little bit justifiable because she fell on Grease Lightning. Yeah, she probably should not have had no business being in the top five, but fine, I, but fine, I guess. <laughs> As, um, but yeah, she, uh, but yeah, Los Agato was probably the favorite to win this, and it ended up starting off very close, very close with the two literally being step for step on the, uh, on Hopscotch. But then going into spring forward, they fell. Yeah, and just to note, the, um, the one-off, Oscars were the same for both rounds. Yeah, I think that was the reason why they chose this round because they really got the second, but yes, they were the same. So, yeah, so I didn't go through anything. But, yeah, Jay Lee ended up winning because she completed swing forward forward while Larissa failed. And, yeah, a little bit surprising, I would admit. Yeah, and that I think that's a record for, like, lowest completion weight. Yeah, the lowest obstacle you've had to go through in order to move on. Like, that, I think that's a problematic thing all on its own, but I don't think I have anything to say on that matter either. It just shouldn't really be possible. No, it really shouldn't be. Um, after that, we had the men's division. After that, we had the men's division, which was Steven Bakta versus Glenn Albright, both of whom had the ones cut in the actual showing. Ones in the actual showing. Yeah, I get, they should have had the one show. Like, fast forwards, people. Like, 
fast forward. Fast forward these people. Because if they're going to be given a full one segment in the eighth episode, yeah, I can see why you wouldn't give them a full on one segment. But you can't just bring these people out of nowhere and expect your viewers not to question where the fuck these people came from. Yeah, they get, like, it, like especially since, like, most of these ninjas aren't well known, but... I think we should at least give them a fast forward. At least give it a, given the watchers at home at least a queer view. Like, yeah, these guys appear tonight. Not just oh, they appear tonight, and they don't even bother to say you know how they did. But um, yeah, that's why we're here. Um, in the actual round, in the actual round, Steven fell on Domino Effect. Well, Glenn Albright fell on Grease Lightning. So once again, a pretty low denominator here. Um, Steve, uh, Steven fell almost immediately on Hopscotch, uh, meaning that Glenn Albright got a very easy win and got a buzzer as well. And, yeah, he ended up moving on. Yeah, I think, uh, the last thing on our agenda for this week, uh, for, not for this week, but for this episode, is the other cut ones that weren't brought up, which there aren't any, actually. Yeah, the only two cut ones were the two we just mentioned, Glenn Albright and Steven Bacta. Everyone else was at least fast-forwarded, which I can always appreciate, but that is not the same to say we have to say about episode three. Yeah, um, oh, wait, it's episode two. Yeah, I just realized that. But, yeah, episode three, episode three, um, actually, but episode three did have a couple competitors, not shown, but we'll get into it. But, yeah, any final thoughts on episode two, uh, on part two of the qualifiers when we move on to part three? I, aside from the stuff we've mentioned, I don't think I have anything more to elaborate on. Yeah, I think it was just okay, honestly. Alright, so in that case, we're going to move on to episode 2, qualifier number 3. I think we'll probably just be calling it episode 3 by, like, idiots. Ah, uh, probably, yeah. But anyway, the obstacle selection was different this time around, as we had Polvo and then the return of fucking roller coaster. Yeah, this obstacle, it's stupid, but it's still here. So, yeah. Yeah, we had roller coaster, log one, and a new obstacle, kite surfer. Um... I think it's fine. Yeah, it's actually kind of a difficult obstacle. I think it's a little gimmicky, but, you know, it's just, like, it's it's on the pastoral line this season. I think it's on the line where it's not overly stylistic or something. I think it's fine. Yeah, it's actually kind of difficult with that bungee cord handle at the in the middle of the obstacle. So, I'll give it a pass on that. And then we had the return of Lasso launch for the fifth obstacle. And, of course, the warp wall and maple wall for the last part. So... I guess not, like, too notable of that night, but, yeah, let's get into it. So, the first one of the night was Simba Jones, who I have nothing to say about. <laughs> it's just, like, this big build-up thing. It's like, uh, here he is. I got nothing on him, man. <laughs> I am not trying to build up anticipation for nothing, but I guess that is what I'm doing by having that kind of tone in my voice. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, Simba ended up falling on the... F right, Simba, Simba actually ended up falling on the third obstacle domino effect. And um, th after that, we had Jody Avila, who, spoiler alert, was one of only two ninjas to complete this course. Yeah, it's a, kind of a consequence of only having, you know, a very small qualifying round, mean, making this, I think, the ninja course with the lowest amount of finishers in the qualifying round. Yeah, definitely for sure. I think it's a little unfair to call it that because, again, to have less ninjas, I don't even think 30 ran this course. But still, it, it makes sense. Yep. So, um, yeah, Jody Avila was the first finisher, and again, one of only two of the night. Still had a really good one, you know, just showing that he's, you know, the big dog, really tall ninja. And, well, yes, of course, he wasn't fast enough to get the mega wall. Still, good one, and that makes, allows us to move on to the next um, segment, being, being fast forward segment. Yeah, we have Elijah Levy, who was taken out by Kite Surfer, and then we had Heather Nelson, who was taken out by the roller coaster. Yeah, I don't even know why they really showed her wanting it. Nothing special about it, just a note. Yeah, no. Um, then we had Sam Sand. Again, surprising me, John. Yeah, it was not a thing to see him. I guess was he, you know, he missed last season. But still, boy, good see Sam Sand. He ended up going on Domino Effect, unfortunately. and did not end up moving on, surprisingly enough, because only last episode. But yeah, still good to see Sam Sand. Yeah, 
Then we had James Thwowart, who ended up going out on Wagwano and did end up moving on to the one-off, so good for him. And then we had um, the next shown one, that being Madeline Mandela's, probably the youngest ninja I've ever seen on Ninja. No, not the youngest. The youngest is still, um, what's his name? Um, I was called. What's his fucking name? Um, Enzo DeFoy Wilson. I think he's still the youngest. Yeah, but I mean, like, she looks young. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm just saying, god damn, she didn't even look 15. She looked like 12. And I'm really sorry <laughs> to all the short people in the audience. God damn, I mean, you are such an asshole. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I don't have short friends. The majority of the females I'm friends with are short. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just the minority one being a lot... I'm just the minority one being 5'7". Yeah, what the fuck, girl? <laughs> yeah, I am pretty tall. Come on, who's going to you two? Yeah, how rude. Like, how nice of you to be that way. I genuinely don't know. Crystal just has a ghost spot, apparently. Apparently, yeah, I'm just a tall girl, and that's that's it. Um, But it just comes into this one. Yeah, it, it is a one of a drawing. Um, she got a pretty good one making all the lasso launch with... She got knocked out, but again, really good one. Yeah, she also had a really boring segment about her mother who was dealing with breast cancer, and wow, they really hyped this up. <laughs> yeah, it's a little long, and also just like, again, too boring for us to even remember. <laughs> Thank us, David. <laughs> to be fair, like, it's not even worth the bringing up a mention. It's just like, you know, it's something that was in her, set, in her one, so I felt like it was um, needed to be brought up, but maybe not necessarily worth a mention. Yeah, I know, especially in that case. But anyway, after that we had Megan Johnson, who is actually a on who ends up falling on the very first obstacle. Yeah, she falls into the area of area. Oh yeah, she falls into the territory of we showed her why, but she was a better one, so I'll give her that. Yeah, she's also the girlfriend of um Kyle Sorderman, apparently. Oh yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty apparent. Yeah, um, um, after her, we had Cajun Jewel, who looked really young for being 25. Yeah, she looked like a teenager, but she's 25, um, and she, and she had a really mini segment about, about building a little cabin in the woods, of building a little cabin with her boyfriend, which I think it's just, it's just the fact that, you know, construction will go, it's fine. Yeah, she ended up going out on log one of the pretty rough knockout, um, after her, we had Gwen Cunningham, um, who ended up on who is the roommate of Daniel Gill. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was. I guess it was kind of cool to see him. He ended up going out on last hole and show he ended up moving on. Yep. Then we had what's one of the night by far. Gary went. Uh, I think why, well, you. Wylan, I think his name is. Yeah, no, it's W E I L A N D. So yeah, but yeah. Longest one of the night, most boring one of the, well, I can't say boring, but just annoying. Like, the editors really popped this guy up. And that's just because he's running with a prosthetic leg. Yeah, so, well, I'm going to talk about this. The old prosthetic leg thing, people find this impressive for my equivalent of no reason. Whatsoever. My equivalent of no reason. I honestly don't like this because we already had a ninja complete on one leg back in, I think, season eight. And we had also had another competitor could be on one leg as well before him. It might have just been him again and me just flipping around. But there was a guy in season eight who competed with one leg and didn't even have his prosthetic on. And he got really far. I understand this course may not have been all that much possible with only one leg. I'm just saying, like, that was more impressive than a guy with a prosthetic. Yeah, he had a um, gutsy save on Log Runner, and that was really a big deal because that was that was come, to come out last year, and they really spent a really long time on that. I don't think we needed to see that whole dilemma. Yeah, no. Again, he spent like maybe thirty seconds just propping himself up, trying to get himself away the jump, and otherwise, I've got nothing else to say. Yeah, Gary Ryland went out on um, what's his name, Kite Surfer, and moved on to the one offs as well. Yeah, I think so far he's the only competitor to get a full-on one show and along with his one-off one. Yeah, that is definitely the case. Um, after him, we had... 
Nolan Wood, who I have literally no notes on, so I'm just gonna say it's been a long one. We'll move on. Are you even gonna check if that's correct? I know it is. We just watched it. <laughs> it's just a question because, like, when I we ever bother to talk about him, he wore a purple shirt. I have nothing else. You remember that? <laughs> I'm just saying that was pretty impressive. <laughs> there was one note thing about him. Either. He's got a purple shirt. You know that's iconic enough. <laughs> Alright, well, I actually do have some notes about this next ninja, Ian Dory, who, yeah, came back. Yeah, I don't think any of us were really expecting this. I think at this point we expected Dory to be completely retired, but yeah. Ian returned mid all the way to last so long, so he's surprisingly enough fell. Yeah, pretty disappointing, but still good that he's moving on. We also had Isaiah Thomas fall in almost the exact same spot on Last Soul Launch. Another kind of disappointing one. I just thought like, they don't even show him. Yeah, he was so popular during season 13, 14. Now it just gets a really quick mention. <laughs> yeah, um, there was also um, Grant McCartney as the next shown one. Now, ignoring all bi my biases against Grant McCartney, um, he had actually a really interesting one getting all the way to Lasso launch. Yeah, he had difficulty on kite, on kite, on, on kite sofa, and also on Lasso launch, where he highlighted how badly designed the obstacle was. <laughs> yeah, so he hopped a rope over the latch and onto the cow's head, showing that the cow's head should not have been part of the obstacle's design. Case closed. I did not think my stupid biased opinion would actually be proven as fact. That's what they probably do. probably do. Yeah. So because of that, he fell, and that is just like the most like bullcrap fail like ever. That is a literally just a design flaw because them trying to make it all look stylistic like, literally backfired in their face. Because I feel like Grant might have actually made it through. Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, then we had Dion Butler, other, who did have a save on, similar to um the guy with one leg, and I still say the guy's name. His name is Gary something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just know he's in the way, just like, this is like a... Alright, but yeah. So, it's, yeah. So, he had a save on Log 101 fell on Kite Sofa. Then we had Joseph Wiles, who showed off a robot at the beginning of the one any of the, at the beginning of the course, one that he designed himself, and, um, yeah, he fell on last launch, I have no other notes on that. Yeah, the book of the course ones we saw, well, Isaiah Wakeham and Isabella Wakeham. Yeah, we saw them fall in literally the exact same spot on last launch. Isabella did technically get farther, but did move on to the semis. Speaking of which, we have Sandy Zimmerman as the next shown one, given that course cursed border that basically doomed any competitor who has it as it are only months with like really only um I think Sean Bryan um I think um it's Jay and Lachey is really the only person that's gone that graphic and still did well so still not a very good ratio yeah yeah no it isn't um she fell on log one which put her in third point with which put her in fourth place among the women, meaning she went in the one-offs. Yep, then, uh, yep, uh, yep, then we had the final one of the night, Daniel Gill. Yeah, this was probably the most exciting one of the night, by far. Yeah, like, I know a lot of people are probably going to say, like, Gary Wineland, but really, he was, like, the propped-up competitor. He had even more showtime than Gill. Like, come on. I don't care the fact that he has one leg. Again, we've seen other competitors do it with one leg without even the prosthetic. And we've also, you know, of course he's going to be propped up against a fucking disability. They love doing that. Which is kind of discriminatory in like an ironic way to me, but I don't know. I feel like me not having a disability, I can't really say so. Yeah, no, it's not. I, I think that'd be a little bit going too far over the line, but I think you have a point, maybe a little. Um, Gil did get under the time limit for the Mega Wall, the fastest time of the night. Now finish the course, one of only two people to do it again. So, um, yeah, he got the Mega Wall. Yep, he was the, I think, third athlete this season. Um, yeah, he was, I believe, the third athlete this season. Yeah, third athlete. Yeah, throw it off with the season to complete the mega wall and get 10 grand out of it. Yeah, and that allowed us to move on 
the Oasis, which started off with the women being between Stacey Zimmerman and Lindsay Dawn. Yeah, Lindsay was the only competitor to get her entire one cut during this entire episode. At least out of the ones who've made it into the top 5 and the top 13. Um... Uh, she failed on roller coaster and moved on to the Oasis. Speaking of the Oasis, guys, we have a couple new obstacles here. Yeah, they added on the flying shelf grab and the side to the second obstacle spot and sideways to the fourth obstacle spot. I don't think I really have opinions about these, though. Yeah, I guess it is good to see the flying shelf grab again, but honestly, it's not really all that much of a difficult obstacle in this position. Yeah, not really. I mean, it's fine. I don't think I have much to be. I think I'm more indifferent to both these obstacles being here. It's okay. Yeah, but anyway, um, on to Sandy Zimmerman's, Sandy Zimmerman and Lindsay Darling's waist. Um, Lindsay immediately fell in the first obstacle. What the frickin' do there? Yeah, Sandy had a very easy win feeling on sideways herself, so she moved on. And then we had Gil... No, he went versus James Thorwatt. Yeah, James um did get a mini segment of him being indestructible about um like mini car accidents and whatnot. I find it really funny that because you know he failed on the course. Yeah, the, 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 like that one exception. Yeah, um, this one was really hyped up as Gary as um James fell on the flying shelf quad and barely cleared it. And Gary clean and Gary cleared it, meaning that Gary White and got another hyped up one that is not worth it. Yeah, yeah. Our boy even goes on to say later, later. I never thought we'd see something like this on the show. It's just like there were so many better milestones in this. I feel like, like, god damn. I mean, props to him, but I, let's props to Gary, but I really don't think he deserves this much showtime. And the fact is, he's probably getting knocked out immediately in the semis. Yeah, um, we have not mentioned it yet, and we're gonna bitch about it later because I'm not personally into the whole idea. But the semifinals are just races, and I'm but specifically winning this up because I feel like Gary's gonna immediately get knocked out unless he gets really fucking lucky. Yeah, I think he has no chance of moving on to Vegas in this format. And, yeah, we'll talk about it then. It really isn't worth bitching about it now, but I'll, but we'll basically get to bitch about it when we get to the semis. Yeah, I'm already, like, dreading it, but that's my position on it. Just, like, my pre-position on it. Yeah, it's it's all three of us here. It's not even just David. Like, I have the same opinion about the whole Waitsis thing, but... I just realized it sounded like racism. Yeah! <laughs> I, you know what I meant. But I have the same opinion, but... Alright. Alright. That's it for this episode of Enjoy the Podcast. Yeah, quite a long one. I think this was a little bit longer than the first episode. We went through the women's competition and the first half of episode one. But we got through it all. And, yeah, next time, we are heading over and doing episode three and four. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah, by the time episode th- the next episode will be recorded, we will seen have seen episode four. I assume by the time this is up, that will be the case as well, maybe. But we're gonna cover both in the next episode. Hopefully, we'll be able to catch up really soon. Sorry about that whole deal, anyway. It, again, it wasn't really planned, but uh, again, we record when we want to, so sometimes you know we might be behind. But covering two um, two qualifying rounds an episode might end up helping in that one. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. But we'll make sure to try to cover up the episode the best we can. This is really the thing we feel like we do with AD 14 and we kind of just we had to go off so we can off that we can just do it for a couple of years. Yeah, I generally don't really want to do that again because it felt a little bit, um, you know, it just, it felt a little wrong to do it that way, but yeah. But anyway, this is next time for the next two episodes of AW15. Peace.